What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today we're taking a look at a real special one from Shiro Goroff, which is a Sinkovich design, and this is the Mini Cannabis. You probably haven't heard much about this knife. Um, they are very, very rare, hard to find, as a lot of player, or a lot of people are actually collecting the individual numbers on the cards, which are printed on the top here. Um, super, super sleeper design, okay? Uh, one for each card in the deck. So 54, and um, people are getting multiples of these. I, I don't actually know when they launched, but they've been around for a few years now, I believe. Little, there you go, little Vegas cards, V cards. And if you recall, they actually made a roulette wheel, I think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think they did them around the same time, which would make sense. But anyway, this is what we're going to be talking about today. So go top up your coffee, go grab a beer, Go grab a uh, energy drink, whatever it takes, to take a look at this one. As a reminder, check out the website bladezilla.ca, which is my website. There you go, where you can get a lot of these knives that I feature on the channel um, in Canada. Ready to rock and roll, and um, ready to go, all priced. So there you go, bladezilla.ca, for anybody interested. Nice little shout out. But, as always, we're not here to talk about Bladezilla. We're here to talk about this gorgeous knife. So let's get started on this one. So um, let's grab the tape measure and get some get some measurements. So coming in at under eight inches, so seven and three quarters, I believe. I think is what they're saying on this one. Overall, I want to say it's like yeah, under two hundred, under two hundred mils. So seven and three quarters. So what, one ninety five ish on the millimeter front. Uh, blade length of three and three eighths to the center of the choil. Pretty small little guy. And one of the four and three eighths ish on the handle, roughly, but could be wrong. Pretty cool one. This particular one, I believe, was number eight, I think. So number eight of clubs. Pretty cool. Um, this particular one as well has a zirconium backspacer. Now they're not all like this. Half of them are zirc and half of them are copper. I happen to have a copper one beside me as well, which I'm going to kind of show and compare. And, uh, and you know, you guys talk about it, take a look at it. It's got a, I believe, a zirc collar to match. Uh, and this, I should also add, this is the first time I'm actually looking at this knife. Um, haven't played with it, haven't done a bunch of uh, macro shots or anything like that. Simply put, I want my first impressions of a lot of this stuff to be your first impressions as well, so you can kind of experience it with me. So, um, there may be things that I say that are completely wrong. Uh, in fact, a lot of things I say are completely wrong, according to my wife. Uh, but hopefully not about the knives. So let's take a look. So, first and foremost, Sinkovich Designs, um, Dmitry Sinkovich, it's got some very unique language to it. You can kind of just see how it compares to some of the other knives, and, and I've got a handful of them here we'll, we'll compare it with, but to me, like, you should pull this guy up and immediately see some deep, deep bends and curves on the blade. He likes to go with nice long drop points. He likes kind of some flat pops, funky designs, and this ticks all the boxes. The blade itself, as you can see, this is Vanex 37. Um, I don't think it's labeled anywhere that I'm aware of, um, but that's what it is, Gen X 37, which is a nice, really cool, underutilized steel, great uh, for Vegas, apparently, so maybe if you're spilling drinks on it, it won't rust because it uh, has a very high corrosion resistance, almost salt water level, which is why a lot of dive knives are uh, Vanex. Uh, not really designed for the inside of uh, Vegas, unless you're drinking and spilling it, or maybe throwing up on it. But uh, either way, super cool knife. Vanex is one of my personal favorites. If we look down the blade, we can see some nice jimping, a flat top with rounded edges, a nice little swage, and then it kind of goes and expands out on the tip to support that edge. Pretty cool. Nice drop point as well. Uh, kind of a uh, flat flat grind on it, so what you see is what you get. And it is equal on both sides, which I will show. 
and you're going to be sick of this knife by the time I'm done showing it. In terms of sizing, um, let's get into that now. We're going to grab our bio. So another Sinkovich knife, that is our bio, which you I think have seen uh, by now on the channel. And we also have a bio light, so that one is the bio dark. There's your bio light, same knife, and here's a good example of the actual camera angle that we're looking at. So bio dark. Uh, we have, I'd probably say the closest knife would actually be the Kami for size, or Kami. There you go. And I should probably center these and kind of show them a little more like this. Because that's going to be more realistic, I think, anyway. Because remember, the camera's always at a bit of an angle to have light shining down above. So, in my opinion, uh, this Vegas knife, uh, or the Mini Cannabis, sorry, the MC, is uh, about the same size. Um, maybe a little bit smaller overall length, but if you like the, ca the Kami, Kami, it's going to be in, in the same ballpark by about a quarter inch, or maybe even an eighth. So there you go. The beauty of these guys, honestly, there's a lot more, uh, a lot more of these available in Kamis, uh, but S110V, you know, I've done a video on this, the um, asymmetrical grind, asymmetrical meaning it's not the same. So if I look at the blade on one side and I flip it over, look how there's a nice big cut into it that is not present on one side. And the actual blade's edge itself is asymmetrical as well, which is really, really rare. So he does some funky things, Dmitry Sinkovich. Um, he does some really funky things. But those are kind of the, uh, the main Sinkovich models that I have here. I do have a Stellar uh, somewhere awaiting a bit, but um, there's a Stellar as well for comparison, which is also a Sinkovich touch, Stellar. And uh, the only thing here to really look at is that it has the Sinkovich bit, right? And uh, if you guys aren't familiar with the Sinkovich bit, they're the little star cross instead of the standard shear Goroff. So, I uh, would like the standard shear Goroff flathead. So, pretty cool. And if I flip this over, I know we've seen that side a lot. Let's flip it over and take a look at what the heck I'm talking about with it being Sinkovich and whatnot. And as a reminder, I've got very sweaty hands. And uh, this knife really shows fingerprints. So, there's no marks on this one, but uh, my fingerprints are making it look a little... A little used, but it's certainly not. All right, so if we look at this guy, obviously on the on the tip here of the hardware, we can see that if it wants to focus, we've got a nice large Sinkovich bit, which is super super sick. And then on the back side, we've got which appears to be Torx. I always thought that was going to be another like a small sink bit, but that's fine. Um, nice standard pocket clip which leans over onto the frame. Um, we've got a, you know, a Vegas or V cards. I guess that's uh, V card series, which is what that means. But as you can kind of see, the lock bar itself hangs onto the frame versus, or sorry, not the lock bar, the pocket clip hangs onto the frame versus the lock bar. So that when you're holding it, you're putting pressure out of the frame. It makes it easier to open. The bend itself is very similar to the rest of the Shergorov. Sinkovich knife designs in that it is set uh, set upright like that. Same thing on the bios, you can kind of see there. It's not internal, and when I say internal, I will find a knife that shows that a little bit better. Where's my F95? So here's my F95. You see how there's a there's obviously a little bend here, but the cutout is inside facing the opposite direction. See that gap there? That's what I'm talking about. So, and I guess, you know what? While I'm here, why don't I show it compared to an F95? There you go. Pretty cool, nice comparison. F95 is obviously a much bigger knife, but um, you know what? One of the things I find so cool about this is, uh, is it, it's a small knife, but it fits your hand like a big knife. And we'll talk about that later. Anyway, I digress. So, you know, we've got that 
you know, Vegas cards logo on there, which is cool. Torx is a bit of an unusual use on a, a Shiro. That's pretty rare and uh, not really the norm anymore. The flipper tab as well. Um, for a Shiro, for, for a lot of the Sinkovich knives, they've been kind of going smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where, if I grab that Kami again, you'll see what I'm saying. Some people have a real big problem with this knife just because of the flipper tab. And if you don't know how to use it, it uh, it can kind of annoy you. But they're kind of known for really short, tiny nubs for flipper tabs. Whereas on this guy, let me just put that to the side here. On this guy, you know, it's a little more pronounced, a little more neon-esque, not quite as big as a neon, but certainly, you know, in the ballpark of a neon. And you know what? We're doing it. That's it with a neon. So, you know, it's a, it's a neon size knife, guys. So if you like neon, you like that size, you like the mini quantums, you like the, the commies, this is going to be very, you know, at home for you. Because it's essentially the same size type knife uh, with very different action, thanks to the Mickey Mouse multi-row bearings. But uh, super cool nonetheless. Super cool. Look at this. Oh, God. Okay, stay on focus. Um, the lanyard hole obviously is punched right through the design, which is, in my opinion, you know, one of those things people complain about, as we can see on the Stellar Touch. Uh, you know, same kind of thing. Lanyard hole goes right through the knife, which is kind of whatever. Some people complain about that, where on a lot of the more modern knives, they've been putting it into the back spacer and uh, kind of hiding it. So from the side profile, it looks like a knife, nothing too crazy, but from the top, the back spacer hides that lanyard hole really nicely. Like I said, to me, not a huge deal, but to some people, it's just one of those things that they talk about. From a design perspective, you know, if you look at like the Cordinal um, or the Cannabis, the full-size Cannabis, they're all kind of like this, which is super sick. God, that flies out. Uh, the Mickey Mouse multi roll bearing system, or MRBS, is, uh, I believe, written on the inside of here. I can't really see because I'm behind a tripod, but hopefully you can see MRBS on the other side somewhere in there. And like a lot of the MRBS on Shirogorov's, this, this one's a little different. So uh, typically it's three balls in a row, one, two, three, in a pinwheel pattern. This one is actually kind of, they call it Mickey Mouse, so it's two, two, uh, two ears and a nose. So in a triangle, in kind of a staggered orientation, which surprisingly gives it a very different feel. Really smooth. It's very unique, and uh, at the same level as roller bearings, in my opinion. Um, as I mentioned, the backspacer on this is zirconium, and we are getting different patterns on the jimping as the backspacer. Remember I always talk about how these guys tend to kind of match or be close? They are not matching. So uh, it kind of goes to show the uh, kind of timeline on these ones. Okay. Perfectly centered. Skeletonized beyond belief internally on both sides. As you can kind of see, I'll shine the light in. I don't know if you're going to see much. The camera's just going to adjust anyway. But hopefully you can see there, Sinkovich design written on the inside of the handle. That is perfect for Instagram, I'll be honest with you. You'll see that at some point. And then just the overall, oh, there's a Shiro logo on the other side. I never noticed that. There you go. I've never noticed it because this is the first time I'm looking at it. Duh. But yeah, nice little Shiro bear on the inside. I'm kind of curious, because there's no Vanex writing on there, if I really look inside here, I'm curious to see if that's written anywhere. Um, and I've looked everywhere, like I was expecting on the blade, nope, right? I was expecting up here, somewhere along the path, it is nowhere in sight. Really weird. And I just did a video... Uh, couple weeks ago of a Riot Tiger and I'm talking and I go, oh, I, can't, I can't find it anywhere on the blade. I stop filming the video and the first thing I see on the frickin' knife is the M390 writing kind of on the blade hidden. I'm just, 
I, I can't make this stuff up, guys. This is why, I, you know, things, things come out sometimes that just make zero sense for me. Um, no milling underneath the backspacer as well, which is uh, pretty standard for Sinkovich. Not always, but uh, there's a rule or exception for every rule, but sometimes they put some centering lines. Nothing like that underneath. Uh, just the milled out pockets. We've got some very light lockup, which is standard on a lot of the sheer Goroff stuff. We've got um, a lock bar insert, and I would assume, I can't really tell if there's an over travel stop in place, and I'm not going to be the one that's going to push that out to find out. So there is no over travel stop because the actual design of this, as you can kind of see, prevents the lock bar insert from traveling past the frame. So really smart design choice in my opinion, because it kind of just puts that whole thing all together in one, which is smart, right? Which is really smart. So just to show you what the heck I'm talking about, I cannot push this anywhere past there because the frame bumps into it. So pretty cool. Really cool. The flipper tab, I know I already talked about that it's small, but it's got some really nice jimping both on the top, the top roll, as well as the front. So really nice, hammers out very smooth, very controlled. Um, no issues here. Now I did want to show you guys a comparison because this video I wanted to do on the zirconium version of the knife, but I did, uh, just through luck, happen to track down another one. And this is a copper version. So I wanted to show you a quick comparison of the two. Uh, because I know people are probably curious what the, the two, you know, look like comparatively. So I'll do a separate video on this knife. But just for those who are curious in the Zerk style, um, the main difference is this. So you get a monster backspacer, obviously, on both. But one is copper. And one is zirconium. There you have it, folks. That's it. Uh, obviously the pivot collar as well are matching so they will be different. So that's it. Um, you know, to me, which one's nicer, which one's heavier, I'd actually should weigh them because I'm curious if there is a difference. I can't see there being a lot. But for me, I just think, given its age, given um, my personal tastes, I really lean towards the copper because I just like titanium and copper. And it looks sexy AF and it looks good. Um, other people much prefer the zirconium because zirk kind of has a bit of a, a sexy factor in the industry and uh, you know a perceived cost to it uh, but while i have you i'm gonna grab my scale we're gonna weigh both and see if there's a difference but uh you know i can't see it being more than what, 100 and 110 grams or so each three seven maybe uh, let's grab my little cloth. There we go. And we'll zero this. Thank you for watching. I know this is painful sometimes. Uh, we're going to do the Zerk. Here we go. First. 3.7. Uh, what did I say? Did I say 3.7? I may have. Grams for my Canadian homeboys or girls. 105. 105. And copper. 110. Wow. Wow. I'm hitting a few numbers, not in the order I want to. Um, 3.8. So 3.8 versus 3.7. So the copper is in fact slightly heavier, uh, assuming every last little detail on the knife is identical, and they're not. They're all kind of one-offs. And remember, um, I, I guess you could argue, okay, there's some different milling on uh, on the you know the numbering and stuff. So maybe one of them might be a little different, but you know, say a number like uh, I don't know card number 10 has two digits so maybe uh, they take off more material etc I don't see that being much of a, a thing but honestly you never know uh, with these kinds of things so the main thing main takeaway here is that one's zerk one's copper and I think both look phenomenal now that I know uh, copper is a little heavier to me it's immediately worth more no I'm just kidding it's five grams guys so between the two, honestly, it makes real, you know, five grams, big deal. Uh, copper, in this case, is heavier, but you know what? It's, they're all individually handmade, so five grams could be in the, the difference in the, the lubricants used. So who knows? 
But um, I'm just trying to think here if there's anything else. Oh, they come numbered with, um, they come with playing cards, um, which is the actual card that this one comes with. So um, they'll come with a eight of, um, geez, I'm losing my marbles here. Eight of clubs card, which is cool as it's COA. And then the other one here will come with the five of spades card. So um, that's the COA. You know, the particular ones I have, the boxes are absolutely thrashed, but uh, yeah, both will come with the actual cards themselves, which is a nice little touch. Um, from a durability perspective, I wish it was more of a titanium type card because I just, you know, if you're going to be etching and doing number work and stuff on zirconium, I think it would have been cool to. Uh, to do a COA that way. But that, I think, is the knife. Um, I've talked about the blade, the Van X Factor, which is sexy. Um, I guess I should talk about the fit in hand. Um, so I'm in an XL, extra large hand, and this one fits my hand better than the Kami. And it's got that same locked-in feel, all four fingers, really nice on the handle itself, but it's where my thumb falls that makes it fit my hand a little nicer. In my opinion, this would be a perfect knife uh, as a production, a production neon type carry. It's just solid as hell, fits your hand nicely, you can choke up on the blade, do some work, etc. It's awesome. The flipper tab comes down and almost goes to a 90 degree pattern up to lock your hand right into that thing. You can see you've got a nice break for your two fingers on the, on the back and two on the front, which splits them nicely. It's just overall a really nice fit in hand. All the edges are beveled, not anything over the top. Um, you know, for a knife that's a Vegas knife, you think it'd be full dress, over the top. It's really not. Like, um, if you were to show me a bio and this and say, which knife do you think is a Vegas series? I would have think I would have thought the bio would be more uh, appropriate. Um, but this is very understated, very quiet. It's an absolute sleeper of a knife. Excellent action that is uh, hard to get on a lot of knives. Uh, you know, plain tie, which is my jam, love it. Individually numbered, which makes these highly sought after to the point where, um, you know, these are custom division level numbers. So uh, with custom division, AKA one of 50, or in this case, one of 54, um, you're at, hmm, I think they're trading for around three and a half US at the time of filming this which is early 2024, and that's pretty common. And as people use them and carry them, that number is just going to go up because the availability goes down for like new in box. So keep that in mind if you guys are looking for these. Um, I've been looking for them for a long time, and uh, this is the first time I've been able to track some down, which is awesome. And now I need to figure out which one of these I want to keep in my collection, because I don't need to. I think I just want one of them. But who knows? Terrific looking knife. I think it looks so good. It honestly just feels like a Neon or a Mini Quantum or a Kami kind of all blended in one. It's a little thicker, right? It's a, it's a fat, it's a fat. Uh, it kind of gives me F7 vibes with the thickness of the back end. That's what she said. It's just a really nice overall fit in hand. Um, you know, and, and I guess if this would have, you know, take it up a notch, could they have done milling? Sure. Could they have done some sort of, like, centering backspacer on the, on the back here to kind of show that? Yeah, sure. But that's not what this knife is about. To me, it's an understated sleeper with superior action, you know, really nice fit in hand, individually numbered. It's, it's kind of like... This knife really reminds me of like a Submariner No Date, where it's a high end, you know, it's got the movement, it's got the, the fancy Rolex factor to it, but it's just, you know, it's just, un it's understated. But you know it's fancy and it's special. That's what's so attractive about this one to me. It's like the Sub No Date, if you guys are familiar with that. Super cool knife. So, there you go, Venex. Mini Cannabis from Shira Goroff and uh, Dmitry Sinkovich, I think is a clear winner, and I'm shocked at how long it took me to track one of these down to play with and take a look at, but uh, definitely worth the wait. 
And uh, at some point, uh, I don't know when, when you guys are going to be watching this video, but uh, one of these will probably show up on the site um, for sale. Uh, because I love to bring this kind of stuff in and put it into the Canadian market and, uh, and help you guys out. Because it's a super sick knife and I just want to spread the love, you know? So, there you go. Um, anything else while I got you guys? Um, i trying to think here. I think that is everything I've talked. Talked about the blade, talked about the handle. I guess I didn't really talk about this bulge for the hardware on the back here. If it wants to focus, just, you know, trying to fit lots of coolness and, uh, and work and blade into the handle. You know, they do little things like that, which show you that it's a very high-end knife. They don't have to do that, but it provides probably support for the hardware. Nothing really over the top fancy. It's just a solid, well-made, super solid EDC with great action. Um, so obviously talked about the blade, the handle, the, the hardware is the Sinkovich instead of the standard Sheargoroff bits. You know, pretty plain Jane clip, plain Jane overall, uh, fit and finish appearance. It's just a solid knock out of the park, very Cordinal-esque. Uh, well, cannabis-esque in a smaller package. Skeletonized, Mickey Mouse multi-row bearings. Insane action. And highly collectible, uh, like you wouldn't believe. So, if you're looking to park some cash into something that's going to appreciate over time, this is certainly one of those knives. Alright, so that is it. That is the Zirconium Vegas Series Mini Cannabis. And if you have any questions, please leave them below. Otherwise, visit the site, bladezilla.ca. Like, subscribe, share. Uh, reach out with any questions. Add me on Instagram, TikTok, any of that stuff. Just let's chat. Let's chat knives. If this is the knife for you, great. If not, I'm sure there's lots more knives coming. Alright guys, have a good one, and appreciate you stopping by, and we'll talk soon. Peace.